Okay, this video is going to be an overview of Parr, Pizzullo, and Friston's 2022 Active Inference Textbook, Chapter 10, Active Inference as a Unified Theory of Sentient Behavior. I'll read the quote, and then Ali, please feel free to give your first overview take on the chapter. In general, we are least aware of what our minds do best. Marvin Minsky. So what is chapter 10 about? Okay, so chapter 10 is by far my uh, most favorite uh, chapter in the whole book. But uh, uh, at the same time, uh, it differs uh, from all the other chapters um, in the sense that uh, it tries to connect uh, connect active inference to so many other disciplines and also uh, it provides uh, some kind of unifying themes in order to tie many of the loose strands uh, of the uh, theoretical work uh, that's been done so far, at least until um, um, I mean, the book's publication. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, enticing chapter in terms of um, I mean, providing uh, many promising uh, or uh, introducing some um, future research um, trajectories or at least promising research uh, trajectories uh, for the future. So uh, for anyone who wants to pursue active inference research, I believe this particular chapter here can provide uh, I mean, quite a bit bit of uh, interesting ideas to pursue. Yes, this will just be a quick overview. They're going to connect a lot of dots. They abstract away from the specific active inference generative models discussed in previous chapters and focus on integrative aspects of the framework, which, as Ali mentions, is one of the most exciting and motivating and inspiring parts. We're going to find out by the end of the chapter whether we have what we sought after, a unified perspective on problems like perception, action selection, attention, and emotion regulation. All these topics, which are studied with obviously a diversity of methods, but also on the theoretical side, essentially in commiserate frameworks. And so active inference here is being positioned as a way to integrate across these different cognitive phenomena and on the more historical or philosophical side, how established theories like cybernetics, idea motor theory of action, reinforcement learning, and optimal control can also be understood within the integrative stance that active inference provides. Section 10.2, wrapping up, is like a speed run on the book itself. They summarize. Chapter one, active inference as a normative approach a chapter with a lot of similarities to chapter 10. Chapter two, the low road to active inference. How? Bayesian statistics. Chapter three, the high road to active inference, the free energy principle and the imperative to exist. Chapter four, the formal aspects of active inference with a focus on variational inference on generative models. Chapter five, they developed from the abstract perspective in chapter four and went into more detail on the process theory about how the principle may be implemented by the brain. And they gave a bunch of examples of systems of interest and related work on the mammalian nervous system. Chapter six, the recipe to design active inference model. Chapter six kicks off the second half of the book and takes a pragmatic turn towards hands-on application learners building their own generative models along the way. Chapters seven and eight are very curtly summarized here. This pair of chapters describes the continuous in chapter eight and discrete in chapter seven generative models. And chapter nine on empirical model-based analysis looks at how to connect data to generative models. So any comments on that or continue on with section 10.3, connecting the dots. I think we can go on to chapter uh, to section 10.3 because uh, you provided the basic summary of uh, section 10.2 perfectly. Thanks. So what about 10.3? Okay, so 10.3 um, is about going beyond uh, some uh, specific 
uh, aspects of, um, uh, I mean, cognitive facilities of, of the agents and try to uh, somehow uh, integratively model uh, the different uh, subsystems of um, cognitive of the of uh, the particular agent's um, cognition. Uh, so, for these, for instance, we can model memory, attention, perception, and uh, all all of these uh, different aspects of cognition uh, in this integrated uh, formalism of active inference uh, within uh, this integrated formalism of active inference and try to uh, somehow see the relationships between all of these uh, different aspects of cognition. And uh, I believe uh, this uh, integrative work can provide um, many illuminating uh, insights about how various aspects of uh, a given agent's cognition is related to each other, which is, I believe, uh, a very important open question in cognitive psychology as well. Great. And the first paragraph references this direction in cognitive science, which is rather than to develop a simple or advanced model of one cognitive phenomena separated out from the others, the suggestion of Daniel Dennett in 1978 was to model a whole iguana, a complete cognitive creature, perhaps a simple one. But 10.3 reiterates the way that active inference can be used to connect dots and integrate across cognitive phenomena. Okay, 10.4, predictive brains, predictive minds, and predictive processing. What would you say about this? Uh, all right, so this is also a recurring question uh, among the people who uh, who are introduced to active inference for the very first time, um, and namely, what is uh, the distinction between active inference and all the other uh, related theoretical frameworks such as predictive, uh, predictive processing, predictive coding, and so on. And uh, this particular uh, this section uh, gives some hint about, uh, the similarities and also the differences uh, between all of these uh, different approaches and how they relate uh, to each other, uh, whether they're subset um, uh, subset of one uh, 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 one of each other or uh, they're distinctly different uh, and fundamentally different from each other. So uh, this uh, this uh, section here, ten point four, um, I believe it can be helpful. Uh, to anyone who wants to understand how active inference fits into this um, general framework of recent predictive um, predictive way of uh, uh, doing uh, cognitive psychology research. Great, and one nice quote here. Active inference creatures fulfill two imperatives, epistemic and pragmatic. That's in reference to the expected free energy. All right, section 10.5, perception. Okay, so if we remember from uh, chapter 10, uh, we were introduced to active inference first by observing how we can model uh, the phenomenon uh, of perception of an, uh, of an agent um, as opposed to uh, modeling its action. And then uh, we saw that uh, they're basically... Uh, I mean, uh, their mirror uh, image of each other, uh, the equations that describe those uh, phenomena uh, are basically the same equations, but uh, just flipped for um, the situation we want to model. And here, uh, there's this generalization of how to, um, how, how does it mean to model perception as opposed to uh, action, and in particular, uh, what's the Bayesian brain uh, hypothesis? Um, I, I mean, what is uh, the particular approach taken by Bayesian brain hypothesis uh, for modeling uh, perception as opposed to some uh, other conventional um, approaches um, to model the same phenomena? Great. 10.5, perception flows into 10.6, action control. So these two sections describe the perception and action view. 
of active inference. In this action theory, there's subsections on idea motor theory, which is a theory with a long history that relates to how cognition influences action, cybernetics, active inference is closely related to cybernetic ideas, and optimal control theory, another framework for thinking about action selection. These sections differentiate some distinctions of active inference and optimal control theory, cybernetics, and idea motor theory. However, largely as their systems of interest tend to be overlapping, there's more in common with these approaches that students of them will find quite familiar in active inference. But again, the authors take care to distinguish what active inference does differently than these approaches as well. Anything else to add there? Um, nothing in particular, thanks. All right, 10-7, utility and decision-making. Action expresses priorities, Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, okay, so here in this section, there's also uh, th this kind of comparative analysis between uh, active inference theory and uh, many various, uh, a few uh, different approaches uh, used in uh, machine learning. So for instance, uh, we have uh, reinforcement learning uh, and um, I mean, various ways of doing uh, modeling the planning and uh, decision-making such as uh, the general Bayesian decision theory, uh, which is a superset of many different approaches used to uh, model uh, the decision-making process using uh, Bayesian inference. Uh, and um, also there's this planning as inference, uh, which is something uh, that active inference emphasizes uh, as uh, again, as opposed to some other traditional or conventional uh, way of modeling uh, decision making because here uh, as a, uh, i mean it's not just simple planning uh, as a consequence of uh, inference but uh, but uh, i mean planning itself is uh, considered um, uh, i mean uh, the inference uh, uh, considered itself as a way of uh, constructing the um, expected free energy. Uh, so uh, in this way, we can regard planning as inference itself. So um, this is one of the novelties of active inference uh, compared to any other approaches as also explicitly stated on page 211. All right, 10.8 behavior and bounded rationality. Okay, so uh, this section also uh, points to some interesting work um, with regards to how we can model um, different conceptions of rationality and specifically uh, bounded rationality. And um, there are some interesting papers uh, which um, came out after the publication of uh, this book uh, in which some, some researchers uh, pursue this line of research um, in order to uh, model uh, even the, cons the way people believe conspiracy theories or the way people uh, do uh, or make uh, apparently irrational decisions and uh, they manifest some irrational behavior and so on. Uh, so uh, this section uh, points out uh, to some tentative ways that active inference can be employed to model uh, rationality as well. So it's not just about uh, modeling perception and action, which is a well-established way of uh, doing active inference. Uh, using active inference, but from this section onwards, uh, we uh, gradually move towards some uncharted territories, uh, which, uh, I mean, admittedly, some of them are still uh, at their very nascent stages. So, yeah. Awesome. 
section 10.9, valence, emotion, and motivation. Okay, again, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, this is also one of the uh, recent developments of active inference, how to model uh, emotion with act, uh, within active inference framework. So I believe uh, one of the uh, earlier, uh, one of the earliest papers that um, did this kind of modeling was, um, uh, I forgot the title, but uh, uh, it's a way of, um, um, of modeling uh, an, an agent's behavior in terms of uh, the positive or negative valence. Uh, and uh, which directly reflects uh, the emotional state of that agent. So by agent, uh, it doesn't uh, necessarily mean a human agent, but uh, we can see that this kind of uh, valence uh, in terms of positive and negative valence and how it can uh, motivate the uh, behavior of the agent uh, can be captured with uh, within active inference framework using uh, uh, using the same techniques we've seen uh, for epistemic foraging and so on. So uh, it's an interesting way of uh, connecting uh, th those two subdisciplines. Yeah, I think it's deeply felt affect. There's other related yeah. works. Yes, too. that was it. Again, another sort of complex or composite life phenomena moving from emotion on to homeostasis, allostasis, interoceptive processing. This section conveys work from a variety of authors that's been continued on about homeostasis and allostasis, which is the anticipatory steering towards preferred states. And section 1011, attention, salience, and epistemic dynamics. Again, approaching a sort of cognitive phenomena nexus and differentiating, similar with rule learning, causal inference, and fast generalization. Here, moving slightly more towards the computational cognitive side. Anything to say on those sections, 1012, 1011, or 1010? Uh, I just wanted to point to uh, the way that uh, some, uh, so up to this point, we've seen uh, mostly uh, the application-oriented research of active inference uh, in order to deal with uh, various sorts of scenarios. Uh, I mean, from modeling uh, the very basic uh, cognition of um, sentient agents to uh, and modeling some even social and cultural phenomena. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to point to some uh, interesting theoretical work uh, that's been going on in parallel with these uh, application-oriented works, uh, which I believe can open up even uh, more uh, opportunities and uh, probably even, uh, uh, I mean, drastically change the view of active inference um, in terms of how to how to approach uh, different uh, scenarios and different uh, phenomena. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, this kind of philosophical and theoretical uh, aspect of active inference, uh, although it's uh, still in its uh, early stages, um, is beginning to uh, lead to some very interesting results uh, in terms of applicability of active inference. Awesome. And then section 1013, active inference and other fields, open directions. As the title would seem to set off, this section goes into some of the extensions and elaborations that are quite ongoing in active inference especially related to social and cultural dynamics and machine learning and robotics. So subsection one, social cultural dynamics, subsection two, machine learning and robotics. Anything to say on that section? 
Uh, nothing other than uh, th there are lots of uh, interesting um, interesting development in this in these uh, particular uh, domains, uh, especially after uh, I mean the explosion of LLMs and uh, generative AI. Uh, we can see the application of uh, active inference even to uh, these cutting edge uh, uh, technological developments as well. Cool. And then section 1014, summary. I'll read the Lord of the Rings quote and then look forward to your take on this last section. Home is behind, the world ahead. And there are many paths to tread through shadows to the edge of night until the stars are all alight. Great. So uh, obviously this is the last chapter of the whole book. And uh, personally for me, uh, reading through this book, uh, I mean, reading, uh, reading it multiple times uh, have always been, uh, I mean, an increasingly enjoyable journey for me. So each time uh, I look at, I mean, different sections and different uh, chapters of the book, uh, I uh, I feel that uh, there are lots of um, interesting potentialities uh, that can be uh, pursued further to uh, and probably even, perhaps even lead to some uh, I don't know some spin-off <laughs> theories uh, and uh, uh, some uh, branch to some interesting new fields. Uh, that is related to active inference, but uh, they uh, somehow begin to follow the life of their own. So uh, the, uh, the main uh, strength of this book, in my opinion, is exactly in providing uh, these uh, kind of uh, nascent ideas to develop further. Uh, and uh, this is, in my opinion, uh, one of the main indicators of a great book, uh, which, uh, I mean, much more than trying to answer the questions, it provides some fertile questions uh, in the mind of the reader. Great points. Totally concur. Time and time again, we've delighted in this work. It's a two-paragraph section. The first paragraph is worth reading from, we started this book by asking whether it is possible to understand brain and behavior from first principles. We then introduced active inference as a candidate theory to meet this challenge. We hope that the reader has been convinced that the answer to our original question, whether it's possible to understand brain and behavior from first principles is yes. We know what side they're on. How do you feel? And then the second paragraph is a quite direct perforation of the fourth wall. And they make a really pragmatic day-to-day -day point about our lives as people learning and applying active inference, which is, it is important to emphasize that active inference is not something that can be learned purely in theory. We encourage anyone who has enjoyed this book to think about pursuing it in practice. Important rites of passage in theoretical neurobiology, and eventually so many other fields too, are trying to write down a generative model, experiencing the frustration when simulations misbehave, and learning from violations of your prior belief when something unexpected happens. And this is something that comes up all the time. There's so many incredible, high-flying philosophical questions, and in the abstract, quite philosophical they are. However, once there's a generative model on the table, once chapter six has been engaged with, a lot of times the abstractions and generalizations are left out. And you can actually say, well, how is attention being dealt with in this generative model? Or what other ways could it be done? And so making the generative model is a huge moment and they emphasize that that's how you can learn by doing, but it's not the only way that you can pursue and engage active inference day to day. It could be in the time interval that's subliminal and between eye saccades. 
It could be having what you expect and prefer for dinner. It could be allostasis, embedded, extended, enacted, and cultured allostasis. And the authors are confident, which is to say precise in their beliefs, that we will continue to pursue active inference in some form. Any closing thoughts on 10, Ali? Uh, I just wanted to attest um, to the last sentence of the book, uh, because uh, definitely after uh, getting uh, familiar uh, more and more with different aspects of active inference, I can see it, um, I mean, realized or uh or to uh, to say it in a better terms, uh, I can see it relevant uh, to many, many different aspects of life, and not just uh, empirical or scientific research, but every aspect of life. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for watching this overview video or playlist, and we hope to see you engaged in a textbook group. Thank you. Thanks.